Bon pomeriggio, good afternoon, and welcome all uh, of you to a new session of the Stars Urban Fest. I am Mar Santa Maria, co-founder of the Barcelona Bay's 300 kilometers per second, and one of the winners of the Star Prize 2019. Today, now, it will be my pleasure to welcome three amazing speakers to discuss about how European projects are shaping our cities following up this morning inspiring sessions on how to imagine the city of the future. We will have 45 minutes to engage in this conversation that I'm really sure it could last for hours. So I remember also to all the audience live in Torino and online that we can keep the conversation alive on a star social media channels. So as I said, uh, I have here with me three transversal profiles from the realm of the arts, science uh, and technology. So first of all, I would like to welcome Denis Royo. Denis is the founder of Dyne, which is a non-profit free software foundry with almost 20 years of expertise in developing applications used worldwide. They build software to communicate, interact and inspire. They let our science and technology meet open source. They are based in Amsterdam uh, with the project Decent, but they build decentralized citizens engagement technologies to empower direct democracy. So welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Then our second guest is Mariona, that she's also uh, in Barcelona. Welcome, Mariona. <laughs> She's the co-founder and creative director of Socotech, which is a digital social innovation laboratory made up of multidisciplinary team that works with passion on the design and implementation of ideas, programs and events, all of them at the intersection of arts, again, science and technology. In recent years, uh, they have implemented numerous activities for social inclusion, STEM philosophy and learning experiences. And last but not least, uh, we have Julia, that she's uh, in Italy. So welcome, uh, Julia. Uh, she's an artist, an interaction designer, committed to fem female health course, and it's innovation combining biotechnology and interactive wearables. She has also have been one of the winners of the Star Prize in 2018 with Future Flora Project. So all of us together, uh, but, ma but mainly the, uh, all, the three of them, uh, we will try to address how artists, technologies and scientists are shaping our European cities. Uh, we expect them no, that they will bring uh, us new perspectives, solutions and awareness about topics that are really relevant for our uh, current society and that often are not addressed by the by the ones in charge. So we will discover what's behind uh, these creative uh, you know, uh, profiles and which are the approaches that they are uh, they have been taking and the impact that they have been generating. So we were talking about uh, you know, uh, this morning about how the city of the future should be, uh, and I will not take my city, which is. Um, Barcelona, no, and, and when when I, I was addressed, no, the briefing, no, by by the Stars organization, for me was relevant this idea that artists and scientists and technologists we are trying to bring uh, issues or topics that not are not addressed, no, uh, by the people in charge. So if I try to to explain or like to to sum up no, how we, in 300 kilometers per second, we are working with data and technology, what we are trying to precisely do is to bring new relevant uh, topics to, to the discussion. No? So on the one side, we are trying to use data, uh, we are trying to use visualization as like a kind of new creative format no, that it's able to transmit, to express, to share with others uh, really relevant topics that we that we have in in cities and that we need to tackle no, in the next years. That would be climate change, the Green Deal, the social inclusion, like digital rights. No, so a bunch of new or new and old questions that are really relevant. No, uh, and I think no, uh, in post-pandemic cities are still a more uh, relevant today, no? So for us, 
working in these new fields uh, at the intersections of the art, the science and technology make us expand uh, this field of a discipline, which is urban planning that has to do with regulations. So with really serious and, you know, and, and legal staff and bring, for example, creativity, co-creation, the perspective, no, not only of the ones that are in charge, but all the relevant actors and, and stakeholders. No? So for us, no, as, as a kind of practice no, that, that really deals a lot uh, with the city, this transversality is it's really important. How no, these this new cities are going to be shaped uh, in recent years. So my first question for uh, all, of the, all of you, uh, making the audience get to know you a little bit better, is how your projects uh, positively influence and shape the cities of the future. So if you can tell us about your approach, the impact that you are generating in the city and the cit in the citizens. No? So for example, Dennis, no, we would like to know more about projects no? like Zen Room, where you link no? uh, the city with R, or like maybe Mariana can explain us more about the events and projects that they do at Socotec, or Julia, how you are approaching uh, health, well-being through science and artistic practice. So, Dennis, if you, if you want to start. Thanks uh, for the great introduction and the good question. So, um, I like to be proven uh, wrong. Uh, it's a wishful thinking. I like to think that I'm helping cities uh, uh, with, uh, with our activity at Dine. Uh, we have uh, quite some uh, uh, feedback from uh, various sides, and it's uh, hard to condense it into one big uh, uh, results or, uh, or table of KPIs because what we do is interdisciplinarity. And I think that uh, it is very important, and this is the core uh, uh, contribution that we have done with Dyne in projects like Decode and Decent, to open up the field of technology to a dialogue that includes everyone. Too often, when we talk about smart cities, we see technologists on top of everything. We see the language of technology as a language that everyone has to talk. Uh, we believe this is not the way to develop a city because a city is done of diversity, is made of diversity, is the expression of a society and not just like a small community. Therefore, uh, I think that interdisciplinarity and comprehension of different languages is the main uh, uh, contribution uh, from a theoretical to a very practical level that we have done uh, in our work. I'm referring especially to Decent, a first project in which Dyne started collaborating with uh, the European Commission, and then later on with Decode, which became a flagship project. Our main output there was indeed the Zenroom as a very compact, uh, free and open source software uh, virtual machine capable of executing language that is human-like. So humans can read and understand. And here I want to launch my uh, provocation uh, to the audience uh, to think about what we do technology for. Most of the technologies that we see deployed in smart cities, they seem to be done to understand humans. So for making machines understand better humans. But I believe we have to invert this trend and we have to develop uh, technology that allows humans to understand machines because their uh, presence is pervasive, is uh, growing, it's uh, uh, everywhere around us, even after these pandemic times, even more, they mediate our communication, and we need to be able to understand what is done with our data, with our presence, with our image, with our uh, existence within the digital space. And how we do that, Dennis? <laughs> Maybe Mariona can, can expand a little bit uh, on that. I'm sure that I Mariona has many ideas. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, such a pleasure to be here. Um, so a little bit uh, on the background of our laboratory, we are also an intersectional team of uh, mostly women. Um, so we have a very feminine perspective on how to fix problems or oxytocin. <laughs> and that's for who are listening is the, um, you know, like the hormone of women <laughs> that makes us so careful, like for, for the other humans. So what uh, we do, we have brought together uh, from 
biotechnologies to uh, innovator designers. Um, you know, we have also a philosopher in residence uh, that she is looking at everything that we develop here to make sure the ethics around um, every program and every um, product we develop uh, is uh, in tune with our values. Um, so uh, we start at very early age. Uh, we're running programs in the, um, uh, in the city, uh, at the uh, libraries, at civic centers, and uh, also at uh, independent um, uh, spaces that are doing quite lovely work outside of the system. Um, and uh, we help, um, you know, teachers uh, to be able to have the tools to um, work with the students. And especially now with the pandemic, it has been very relevant to us that the work we were doing before was very necessary. Um, and so ideas uh, that I could share about uh, how we tackle problems, maybe with um, uh, concrete examples. We had a school that came uh, to visit us. Uh, they had a problem where their community, they were um, from different backgrounds. Uh, so they spoke very different languages. So we were able to generate some um, tutorials that we uh, um, were able to translate with machines. That, that's what they are there for, uh, to be working for us and not ask for them. Uh, so, so and we were able to, um, you know, translate to Urdu, Tagalog, and uh, gave the tools to the professors at the... Um, this was a computer science um, section of the school, uh, so they could, um, you know, like uh, do their own lessons. So giving the tools and uh, not just becoming like a resource uh, for them to need us forever, <laughs> you know, and just giving them um, the, um, you know, like a way to, to be able to, to develop their own activities, their own programs we have. A teacher conference that has also been uh, thriving a lot. It's called STEAM Conference. It's a public conference, totally open, accessible, and um, free for all. Uh, this conference uh, has been going uh, for seven years, uh, and um, it's been uh, right now marvelous to be able to connect with uh, people all over the world. We have on Friday, we're connecting with Arvind Gupta from Pune, India, and he's making toys from trash, and he's explaining very complex science. Um, through all of the activities he makes. Um, and so we are supporting communities from Los Angeles, India, uh, Japan, everywhere, uh, through collaborating um, uh, you know, on projects. Uh, it's been quite amazing to see that a conference that was present, um, physical, like 300 people, it has gone up to 6,000 in participation. So uh, not, uh, you know, that hasn't been quite that, um, uh, you know, hard for us to do this switch. And we're very pleased to be able to open windows uh, to other communities and uh, gather their, um, you know, their tools and their processes and their ideas to be able to tackle the, the problems that are happening in cities that at the end they're the same everywhere. Uh, so at this level, we've been able to connect, uh, you know, very well. We're also been working with the universities to be able to foster, um, um, you know, like steam, um, uh, like uh, uh, steam, like interest uh, into women um, uh, career uh, choices. So we've been working with the uh, Universidad Politécnica de uh, Catalunya, which is uh, a university that um, has um, EDI, which is a uh, artificial intelligence. Um, uh, institute with 50 researchers and we've worked with all of the women there to bring top secret roses giving visibility and voice to women that were uh, behind uh, the computer revolution and uh, the software programmers uh, we've been the first we had a lovely so we're always trying to to you know to build narratives and to empower women so now we have a program that is uh, bringing more girls into uh, this field uh, with, uh, you know, hope and aim that we will be able to change uh, society at large. And I'm not going to extend myself because <laughs> we do loads of stuff. I'm getting tired <laughs> of thinking of all the stuff I could explain you. <laughs> so, and what you. about you, Julia? Um, so first, hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me and in. buon pomeriggio. Um, well, at, the, at Alma, we are also... Uh, co-creating tools in the field of technology and, and education to, to create a radical and cultural change in female intimate care. So I feel like I'm, I'm combining kind of uh, 
Marion and probably Dennis together. And we are a multidisciplinary team uh, uh, composed of the designers, anthropologists, and the scientists. So we really use as well um, the community and, and, and the people to try to understand why there is even this huge culture of silence in female intimate care and how technology and machines are not the solution, but rather the tools to bring a change. So while bringing this change, of course, you need to allow uh, the users and the people to understand what is happening. Uh, therefore, uh, we work as well with languages, with open source toolkits, and really try to understand together uh, how we can even develop uh, innovat innovative products uh, that female would like to use. For example, um, at the moment we are developing a community platform, a safe and inclusive space where everyone is able to uh, share their stories about female intimate care and also find a space where they can see how globally everyone like uh, from different cultures and background they are really sharing their own experiences which um, like from all the workshop we have been running from Rio to Thailand in presence we really noticed that uh, the taboo it's really there but of course everyone has different layers of uh, uh, stigmas and um, and backgrounds so this is one part where we are now running workshops, uh, again, hopefully in presence and surveys to, to design this, this platform. And at the same time, we are developing in the lab um, a sensor to monitor vaginal fluids and really understand how technology and especially wearable technology can become also a tool for female to understand what's going on in, uh, in our body and especially in a place where most of the time uh, uh, we consider so taboo and so hidden, but honestly, and actually is where everything starts and where like also the, the life of a woman is, it's, it's going through and it's passing with emotion. So, um, yes. And I'm very happy to be part of this conversation because of course, sometimes we don't really, uh, we don't really see into the urbanistic planning as Alma, but of course the way we do education and we co-design with community, of course, has the impact that will shape the city of the future. Great. So I think that no, uh, all of the three of you, you know, have used words like interdisciplinarity, collaboration, uh, co-creation, uh, I'm going then after have a like a kind of discussion about this machine human thing, you know, thing that that Dennis proposed. But uh, as all of you, you know, are like kind of used, you not know, for example with you in particip participatory project with well, when you when we make a kind of urban transformation. How do you design or envision this creative process and how they affect the development? of your work. And for me, another interesting idea no, that I think that three of you uh, somehow uh, throw into the table is how we ensure that we don't leave no one uh, behind this. No, At the moment where technology is involved in this creative process, how we ensure a kind of inclusive uh, participation. Dennis, if you want to, to be the first <laughs> again. I we can hear you. Oh, yes, sorry. I think the answer we can all agree about is uh, um, by making processes more transparent and uh, explained, well-documented. Uh, this sometimes means taking more time to develop uh, technology and infrastructure, taking the time to really uh, document it. And this is a good practice in free and open source software. I like to say that the software is really successful mm -hmm. if someone else managed to use it, use it, adapt it, study it, change it. That's an indicator that software uh, is really uh, useful. The community around it. And nowadays, we can see it even better with the tools we have for publication. Uh, but I like also to play the devil's advocate. Um, I think that. Uh, uh, we have to start thinking of uh, uh, all participants, um, not as people being more forward or more behind, because these uh, will depict uh, people in need of help. 
where sometimes these people have just different knowledge, a different set of knowledge, and a different way to interact with uh, uh, tools, uh, reality, the environment, and other people that we need to understand in order to help ourselves. So the, the rhetoric uh, I, I recall, uh, uh, I recall uh, where, where this rhetoric was started, it was the Obama campaign uh, talking about uh, no kid left behind in the schools in the US uh, to actually uh, try to uh, deploy an education that would not leave behind the kids. But I argue that some kids are not behind, are just uh, uh, different in the way they think. And uh, when we come in the context of a city of adults, uh, we are not just talking about kid and age. We are talking about uh, older people, elderly people that are able to share uh, a much richer knowledge about the environment than any machine or any monitoring uh, uh, installation can provide us. So, yeah, my provocation would be here to not see this as a linear uh, process, but to start opening our mind to a more holistic comprehension of uh, what is around us and uh, understanding that so far we have done a terrible job in making uh, uh, the rhetoric of technology, smart cities, uh, inclusive. Not us here in this panel. I really thank you for gathering us uh, and including me into this excellent uh, set of examples. But at the larger scale, we know very well that the procurement, the, 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 the follow the money paths uh, of uh, uh, the smart cities, uh, where uh, all this is going uh, so far is going into the direction of technocracy and the technocracy that imposes on us this linear thinking of uh, we are behind if we don't know code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that we have a really relevant example no, that Mariona, uh, I think that she, no, she, she explained somehow that during the pandemics here uh, in Barcelona, no, the main problem or like the main concern of you know, of the administration were to provide tablets to kids you no know, so they can connect to the citizens you no know? and i have heard in you know, in a panel of, of discussions you no know, the example of latin america where they use the infrastructure of bus bus schools or like the buses between you know, the different cities to provide like you no know, photocopies and paper uh, you know a paper to the students so they can still uh, no, use the um, or like attend the school no so how at which point technology you no know, <laughs> uh, is leaving us no or behind or like trying to you no know, to focus us uh, on one path i think that mariona she really has you no know, a lot of experience of working with uh, all these all different age groups so maybe mariona if if you can expand a little bit on that yeah, I love this um, this sense of this reductionist, the reductionist, you know, view, no, like like embracing complexity, and um, you know, a lot of the places we go are very complex, and they, nobody knows better about complexity about the places like that we arrive. At. So I think like this sense of like trying to compartmentalize everything, you know, this interdisciplinary, you know, experiences we're speaking about, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy at all. Participation is messy, <laughs> but it's uh, very fun as well. And so um, being able to share with, um, you know, the, the community, like, and, and, and back and forth, no, like this complexity to connect with the real world schools um, that are completely, you know, like, uh, you know, we have a problem with our structure, so let's just throw hardware at it. And because there's like big contracts behind all of this, and what we need is software. And when I say software, I don't say software. <laughs> I'm meaning the software in the humans, you know, the training. And uh, I always talk about emotional infrastructure. Um, you know, technology is a tool. At the end, um, this, uh, you know, sense that when you arrive... Um, we arrive to schools and they ask, well, we want to turn our whole school into a STEAM experience and we're going to, you know, like bring the whole like um, teacher base, you know. And so we, we gather with them um, and you realize that they are, you know, auto censoring themselves. And we are, too. You know, they're like we are from humanity. So <laughs> we are, you know, from science. And so um, this sense of that reality is complex, that connecting with reality um 
it is a matter of being able to bring all the experiences and all of the you know teacher base is very important to get this accomplished you know and also like as uh, Dennis says, not arriving there, like we have the clues because I'm very scared every time like, we go anywhere to do an intervention just because I have a lot of respect and responsibility of what's going to happen. Uh, and I think they feel the same way. And if you go in that way, we are at the level, you know, and we can just start working together. Um, the sense of, uh, you know, this um, model that we've had until now where uh, you just call the provider, they give you all the tools, this is standardization and it's very like nasty to apply the same solutions to very different problems and very different backgrounds. So if we want, you know, to build an inclusive uh, landscape um, and we want to be able to uh, like work with all of these you know, voices that usually have been silenced, we have to start with this emotional infrastructure, not to just, hey, uh, technology is a tool, is developed by, you know, humans, and uh, it's not mm, this, you know, like it's not a NASA rocket. <laughs> it's like, there are many ways to uh, tackle problems, um, but I think embracing complexity and just not compartmentalizing everything and, um, you know, like just like running away from reductionism is like the most healthy thing we can do. And of course, first disciplinary, um, uh, you know, collaborations, because where did most of the cool projects happen? Either at a cafeteria, you no, know, of a university or a bar, and where, where a bunch of friends were not even thinking about doing something or not, they were not like in a formal working setting. They were with a coffee chatting and they were coming from different backgrounds and they had this switch of paradigm where something very innovative happened. And, you know, this contribution to uh, education, to healthcare, to uh, you name it, um, it really resides on the border of, um, you know, like that, the, we, we want to call it like the intrusive thinkers <laughs> that we are seeing things that sometimes is very hard to see from inside. And when you are really, you know, got a lot of vices of, of your own knowing. So I really love, um, thank you, uh, Dennis, for like, uh, you know, like bringing this up. And I'm super excited to hear what Julia <laughs> will contribute. Um. Thank you, Mariona. And uh, <laughs> while listening to you, I like to remember one, uh, one thing this year. It's a hundred years from the birth of Edgar Morin, a philosopher that fought his entire life against the, the concept of reductionism. So <laughs> definitely on topic. I'm sure that the, the audience also will be really interested to listen to Julia and how you articulate you know, the communities and how you link this to the creative process and science. Yes, um, so at Alma, the collaboration is, is the core of the whole methodology in order to develop products. And uh, and actually, as a designer, I couldn't see in another way. Like, so for us, like, really like going from uh, user diaries, like, or survey, engaging through workshops is just one of the, the piece that will create then a whole system and product and infrastructure. And I especially love and like the... Uh, the emotional infrastructure that my Mariona was mentioning because it's really that type of uh, emotional aspect that when you do user experience or when you when you collaborate with people you want to get in order as then a creative to give something and to create something that will support them. And at Alma, for example, at the moment we are collaborating with local organization, well, with global organization on, that tackles uh, women's health so actually, if in the audience there is someone, uh, please get in touch because we are slowly moving uh, from Taiwan to Sweden now and, and, and try to really understand what is the um, what are the different layers that in, in a local aspect everyone has to deal. So, for example, I wouldn't be able to, to of course, understand fully the situation of, of a female even in Zambia if, of course, I wouldn't have support there. So this is how we work. We collaborate with, with local association in order to have a global understanding, uh, which of course is an ambitious also uh, view to have, but at the same time is necessary because uh, we tend to really see everything uh, happening in our garden, little garden, without really seeing that we are just part of an immense ecosystem 
which indeed not also it's made of human, but also other organism. And yeah, recently with these times, um, the concept of future flora, which was this uh, kit designed for female to grow your own uh, um, vaginal flora at home, came back very strong. So with that project, actually, I wanted to sh to to kind of provoke the audience and say, look, if we will have an incubator at home, why not that we can grow our own bacteria to replace our uh, microbiome when it's not uh, in a good balance. And it was really just um, uh, a way to show that actually, why if, uh, uh, what if uh, everyone could be a citizen science, could be an active participant in, in the city, in uh, like the everyday life, even in a, in a field that is, it could be like a bio biology or technology, which is not really what we what we study what we are what we work with but at the same time it's something coming from our passion and from what we want to learn so i guess also allowing to uh for a language so for an inclusive language and inclusive technology as well it will bring much more um like a depth for people to understand many layers of also those machines more and more coming closer to our body and, and also an awareness in the way that they will use it. So at the same time in, uh, in Alma, we are developing high technology to still respond and to show that wearable tech should be into the, applied for the healthcare and for female healthcare, but also, for, also we are developing low technology. So to really allow everyone to make their own kits and to really understand what is going on, for example, in their vaginal fluid. Yeah, great. Yeah, that was, that was totally amazing. I was taking my my own notes. I think that if Dennis can stay for the for the last question, it will be it will be great. So I'm going to not recalling uh, you know, during the preparation of the session, no, uh, what the new European Bauhaus no it's proposing. It's this idea, no, that that we really we really share, no, in 300 kilometers per second, that the cities should be beautiful, sustainable, and inclusive, no. And somehow I think we tackle the three uh, objectives, all of us uh, together. But my question is, how we make this possible? So, how we make possible this collaboration between science, technology, and art, no, that has proven to be super fruitful, but at the same time, like a uh, really difficult, no? like at the, at the kind of collaboration that the STARS program um, is doing. What will be your desires to evolve or broaden this, no? uh, these methods uh, in the city of the future, if we need to take into account uh, other per perspective needs? And how we fit this into, no, as Dennis was saying, in the procurement and organizational no, uh, structures that we have no, uh, in cities where are really fixed no, uh, and somehow no, are not that, uh, or don't have this informality that this cross collaboration maybe, maybe will need. That uh, um, one, one, one big thing. I'm not uh, an expert of Bauhaus, but what I understand from the movement uh, in architecture and design is that transparency of processes and um, intuitiveness in design has been important, and this is also about uh, inclusiveness. Uh, transparency in terms of understanding how these beautiful things uh, work and um, transparency and, and beauty. I mean, also beauty for me is, uh, is uh, uh, simple. It's not re reduced complexity, <laughs> it's simplicity by design. Um, simple is beautiful is, uh, is uh, a book, a statement by an yeah. economist. <laughs> Marker and, uh, and I very much like these these principles how they evolved also in the design of software and digital systems uh, because uh, complexity in technology works differently as complexity among humans and in society it creates dependencies and these dependencies are often uh, proprietary 
So our cities are nowadays bound to um, 100 years long uh, contracts with the provision of technology to run them that is uh, not creating a playing field, not fostering nor innovation nor competition, mm -hmm. is just locking down ourselves to an infrastructure that has no incentive to become beautiful and simple and useful. So uh, I think that creating a playing field where these situations can become uh, a mm -hmm. market with uh, fair rules that are uh, clearly enforced. If Europe wants to go the way of a free and open source, this is a very good uh, intention, especially for digital, uh, uh, for, for what I know best, uh, digital systems and cryptography and so on and so forth, then it must do it. It's not a fake concept. Bauhaus is not a fake concept. There is a community behind that worked for 20 years, free and open source as well, so when we want to do something, we should really do it and we should be fierce and proud enough to shape a new idea of Europe and cut the dependencies that we have from systems, from uh, multinationals, from uh, uh, incredibly complex technologies that only create dependencies and curb the freedom of the new generations to build a city in a different way, to evolve it, and to sometimes, when it's needed, revolutionize the places where we live into a better place. I, I am um, connecting now uh, from the south of Italy, and I tell you that uh, there are places where you need a revolution before a reform. <laughs> Mariana. Marvelous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> We need a revolution uh, almost everywhere, I think. Uh, Dennis, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, am <laughs> I don't know where to take this one. So how I think cities um, at the governmental level, they should include everyone, they should listen to everyone, and they should um, be able to work, you know, uh, through... The processes they have set, uh, they are like uh, hardly conducive to be able to innovate and hardly conducive to be able to make simple and beautiful things that uh, Dennis uh, embraces. And I do too as a software developer for many years, a uh, UX designer. That was, uh, you know, the highest uh, <laughs> I could achieve. So, so I think like for cities it's very um, dangerous when they are uh, standardizing um um, you know, software at the, at the city, city level that they, you know, become um, slaves of, uh, of needing services from uh, different collectives. And I would, you know, be, uh, I think I would generate a big debate, but I would be inclined to say in both sides, you know, not because... Um, you know, open source is marvelous. I am a super fierce, uh, you know, like um, uh, like um, defender and like collaborator. But at the same time, I feel like we need to be able to be inside of the system that there is currently uh, ruling, um, you know, and this goes against the revolution that I just uh, said we should have. But, you know, to be able to uh, tweak what we have and to be able to, because unfortunately, like the things that are already said and in motion, they won't go away um, um, uh, anytime soon. So we need to be able to make a, a, a transition where the citizens don't, don't suffer. Uh, and the point that uh, services, at least in this country, are uh, in terms of user experience for websites, it's a uh, complete torture um, to use most of the services that uh, government provides. Um, they are you, you would have to um, give very advanced lessons to the citizens about, you know, how to use digital certificates and all kinds of like really weird um, ways uh, to, to interact with the system. So, um, you know, when uh, we are designing um, the city, we should be looking at, um, you know, bringing together um, universities and um Companies, uh, non-profits, cooperatives, uh, all the whole ecosystem, uh, citizens, of course, we are all citizens at every 
structure that I mentioned uh, and uh, a very early on intervention in schools to be able to uh, give the tools and give, um, you know, build the, the voices of disobedience, you know, like technological disobedience is the terminology that I absolutely love, no? Into being able to be part of this. It's not, I'm not a technologist. I'm not a scientist. I'm so fed up hearing this because we carry in our uh, pockets and our purses and backpacks, like mainframes that, you know, many years ago would have uh, been the size of half of uh, our laboratory. <laughs> so... So, um, yes, um, I think like interdisciplinary, <laughs> you know, settings where um, we get many um, uh, views and uh, we get like, um, we, we open up for, for inclusive narratives and women, uh, you know, like intrinsically, uh, we have a collaborative and a very like uh, caring, um, and I don't want to like generalize or stereotype because this is very ugly, but I can tell you that, um, you know, that our levels of oxytocin make us want, you know, to collaborate and to, and to, and, and we need to be part of, of the, of the city narrative. And uh, we need to be part of like the software development community, um, because if not, we get very skewed views of uh, all the, software that is being built, all the programs at the city level, they're very, you know, oppressed by the patriarch, uh, patriarchado. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, I'm going to pass um, <laughs> the word, yeah, to, the word to, yeah, maybe a last comment from Julia. Before well, I think Mario and I pass it to me in a very nice way and very yeah. close to what I do, <laughs> kind of too easy. Um, yes, I'm coming from the same premises and uh, what I think, probably with a still idealistic mind, I don't know, uh, is is that there should be uh, an access that from from the from the top should really start from the bottom. So it's open from open regulatory system, from like open uh, like language and access to a language that is um, easy to understand, read or watch to everyone. So unfortunately, well. Fortunately, we are all diverse, diverse in uh, like the way we speak, the way we approach things. And we need to allow this, uh, this diversity to actually raise and have a voice. So not only like um, allow everyone to be active participant and active uh, in, in, in their everyday life, in their, in their thinking, but also in shaping what uh, it should be next. And uh, most of the time, of course, we, we are coming from like, um, a system, not going to go to the patriarchy because it's not the time, but in, in a system which, of course, has been shaping the way we speak, the way also the body has been understood in, 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 in a city or in the society uh, in a very well-defined uh, uh, way. So it's really time to have this kind of uh, hacking um, feelings in, in, in just like reshuffling and re-understanding like uh, why we are here, what we are doing, and just reproposing different uh, scenarios and different realities. So I think it's time to close. We are <laughs> running out of time. So uh, I would just enumerate some of the, the words no, that you use, interdisciplinarity, diversity, complexity, ethics, that it's something that we also we could talk uh, for hours, uh, this idea of the emotional infrastructure, how we you know, uh, can work uh, locally and globally. And for me, what is really most uh, interesting about the session is how we turn subjective or subjectivities, complex subjectivities, no, uh, in really uh, no, nice and, and transversal projects. So I would like to thank you, the three of you, for contributing to the discussion. I would also would like to thank the audience and remember that we can keep this conversation alive in on social media channels of Starts Urban Fest. And I would like to welcome you all to stay for the next session that will start in 15 minutes and it will be discussing on cross-sector artistic practice, trends and insights. So goodbye. Uh, ciao a tutti. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Tchau!